by Ryan Day, head coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes. We will begin with an opening statement from Coach Day, then go to questions. To ask a question during the session, please raise your hand using the raise your hand icon within Zoom. If and when your question is selected, the host will unmute your microphone and say your name. Once your question has been answered, your microphone will be muted and your hand will be lowered. Coach Day, please give us a brief opening statement and then we will go to questions. Uh, yeah, tough night, tough night. Um, I'm proud of our team, proud of the seniors, proud of um, the year that we've had, but um, that was a tough night, you know. Um, a lot to unravel there, um, but, you know, when you look a team in the eye in the locker room after the long season we've been through, um, you know, it's it's hard to start uh, focusing on, you know, one or two plays or whatever it was, you know, because they've been through so much. Probably proud of the legacy that uh, the seniors have left behind, um, but uh, you got to give credit to, to Alabama, uh, certainly a, a very good team, and uh, they played really well tonight. Our first question is from Cameron Buford. Hey, Coach Los Angeles. Hey, Coach Los Angeles News Observer here. I, I want to ask you about the game difference. You guys play seven games versus their 12 games in the season. Do you think those extra games allowed them more time to get comfortable with each other versus your seven games? You guys still working on some stuff, maybe? I think, um, you know, this season has been, um, you know, crazy, disruptive, all of the above. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, some actually not having some games being canceled, not being canceled. It's just that's what it was. And, um, you know, what I tried not to do and what we tried not to do is focus on those things and, and have built-in excuses. We just kept pushing forward, um, you know, not having guys available. And, and then, like you said, get into a rhythm. Um, I thought going into the semifinal game against Clemson, we, we hadn't played our best game yet. Um, and, you know, we needed to play our best game tonight against Alabama, and, and, and we didn't. Our next question is from Austin Ward with Letterman Row. Go ahead, Austin. Ryan, I know that this just ended, you know, half an hour ago, but I wonder, you know, where do you go from here? This year was so long. You guys worked so hard. I, I can't imagine that you want to just go straight back into off-season workouts. What, what's the next step now? Yeah, Austin, we, we, need, to, we need a break. Um, we need to get away. Um, kids are guys in their families, and – uh, we we all just need a break, um, and you know we've already started to put together the uh, the schedule for the spring, uh, but but we all need to get away for a while. This has been a long long road. Um, guys miss their families, and uh, and they deserve time to be with them. Um, and so we'll unwind for a little while, have an opportunity to reflect on what the season's been, um, and, and then get back into it. But uh, but you're right. I mean you can't just go back to work here. Um, there, there needs some time to rest and reflect. Our next question is from Dennis Dye with CBS Sports. Dennis, go ahead. Uh, Ryan, you've done this a lot of times, game plan for a game, but what's it like, you know, looking at film and tendencies and everything else against Alabama and then actually facing them, facing all that firepower? What's it, what's it like to deal with it? Well, no, they do – you know, they, they're very, um, you know, good schematically and, and they have really good personnel. And so, uh, you know, it's one thing to, to have a good play. It's another thing to execute it. And, um, you know, we didn't do that, uh, you know, well enough on, on either side of the ball tonight. Okay. Next question is from Joey Kaufman. Joey, go ahead with your question. Joey, are you there? Okay, we'll move ahead. Then with our next question from Pranav Rama. Go ahead with your question. Sorry about that. Coach, uh, second half, why do you think the game slipped away from you guys? 
I don't think there's one thing. I think it's several things. Um, you know, we, we didn't finish a couple of those drives, um, didn't get the fourth down conversion, uh, two of them. And, uh, and they continued to, to make big plays. And, um, you know, they got up, I think, four scores on us. And, and we couldn't quite keep up. And so it was just a combination of things. I thought there was a point there where if we had got to stop and got into the end zone that, um, you know, we had an opportunity to get, get back in within a couple scores, uh, maybe get it down to 10. And, um, and so, you know, but that didn't happen. You know, and I just think it's a combination of things. Our next question is from Stephen Hellwagon. Stephen, go ahead with your question. Yeah, Coach, I know that uh, just minutes after his last game, or presumably his last game, it's uh, tough to take stock of what Justin Fields meant for this program. But just your thoughts, in a nutshell, if this is it for him, 20-2, uh, and two, I believe, as a starter, and just uh, the, the courage and everything he showed and leadership he brought to your program really kind of bridged the gap for you getting this program and your part of it started. Yeah, I mean, Justin's been unbelievable. He's a as competitively tough uh, a player as I've been around. You know, for him to go out there and play today, um, I mean, really shows his toughness and how much he loves his brothers. You know, he still took some shots on that hip, and um, you know, he was he was not 100 percent tonight. You know, he he was working through it and uh, made some really good throws, made some gutsy plays. You know, kept us in the game there for a while, uh, but. He's a, he's an unbelievable. Our next question is from Nathan Baird. Nathan, go ahead with your question. Ryan, you knew that with their explosiveness and their balance that uh, I guess you're kind of in a dandy if you do, dandy if you don't thing sometimes on defense. But I guess just what was the approach and um, as far as – how to how to play them as a mix of linebackers, mix of defensive backs. What, what was the choice there, and and why do you think they were able to exploit it so well? Well, you know, we we wanted to make sure we didn't change, um, you know, what we do just fundamentally, but we also had to have some change ups because um, you know if you just sit there, they they're gonna pick you apart. But but again, I think it goes back to you know it's one thing to have some ideas, it's another thing to execute them, and uh, we didn't do that well enough. There was just obviously way too many big plays, and um, you know, and, and then on offense, you know, we couldn't we couldn't go score for score with them, and you know, and then the game gets out of hand. But um, you know, our, our guys competed; they play all the way to the end, and um, you know, I wouldn't have any other group with me. You know, they're they're a special group of men. But to go back to your question, yeah, I mean, we had some things that we we did that we wanted to change it up. Uh, we also wanted to make sure we were doing the same things that got us to this point, uh, but clearly it, it wasn't good enough. Next question is from Rob Aller. Rob, go ahead with your question. Hey, Ryan, it's one thing to see a guy on tape, another to see him live. Can you just comment on Devontae Smith? Uh, have you seen anything quite like that? Is he one of the best you've seen? And, and the pressure of having to score every time as an offensive coach. Can you speak to yeah. that? Yeah, no, it's it's that part is tough. And then and then I, I think that there's a feeling of if you, if you if you don't score, um, you know, you're going to get down. And then they, like you said, the pressure mounts. Um, you know, we got that turnover early that kind of got us going a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean. I don't know if I've seen one better than better than that. I mean, he just seemed to uh, create a lot of separation. Uh, he's obviously very fast. He he plays stronger uh, than he looks. You know, he's not a very big guy, but he's his play strength is is significant, and um, and he just eats up ground down the field once he gets those strides going. Tremendous ball skills. Um, you know, Heisman Trophy winner and, and well deserved. He's he's a great player. Our next question is from Bill Landis. Bill, go ahead with your question. Hey, Ryan, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, thanks. Um, you, you said you didn't want to change your defensive plan coming into this game. This this vision, the structure of this defense is, is something you said you wanted to keep in place. Do you think you need to change it? Is it is it too rigid when you get on the field with a team that has this kind of talent, a, a team that you're going to see you know, every year moving forward once you get to this kind of stage? Well, like I said, we, we did do some different things. Um, you know, we, we changed up some of the looks and, and played some too high. 
which is not something we typically do a lot of. Um, you know, pressured some more the last couple of games. So I, th I thought we, d we did mix it up um, a decent amount. Uh, but again, it, it's another thing to actually execute it. And, uh, you know, when you're playing against elite uh, players, and, and uh, you know, this is probably one of the better offenses in, in college football in a long time, um, you know, the margin for error is tiny. So um, I think it's probably more the execution. You know, I thought at least, you know, in the first half we did a decent job against the run game, uh, which was a huge emphasis point is we had to stop the run, and, and they're very, very well balanced. And so that's the challenge when you go against a team like this. But uh, clearly we didn't hold up, you know, well enough in the past game. Our next question is from Bill Rabinowitz. Bill, go ahead with your question. Hi, Ryan. Uh, I'm assuming uh, Trey Sermon was a huge part of the offensive game plan. How much of a blow was that to lose him? And uh, could you also address the decision to kick the field goal when it was fourth and six, fourth and goal from the six, I think? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, to lose Trey on the first play of the game, which is one of those things, you know, whenever you think the, what's going to happen in the game, it's probably not going to happen that way. And we lose Trey in the, in the first uh, play of the game. And, uh, you know, we certainly missed Tommy Togiai in the game and, you know, a few others. Um, but, but that is what it is. You got to overcome it. And like I told our guys, you know, nobody feels sorry for you. So you just got to keep pushing forward. It's kind of been the theme of, uh, of the season. Um, well, I, I think if it was uh, fourth and, you know, one, fourth and two, fourth and three, um, you know, I think you, you probably go, you know, probably go for it. But I think it was either on the five or the six. And I, I think that the percentages there are, are very low uh, conversion rate. So uh, I just said, you know, let's just take the three points and move on. Our next question is from Carter Hill. Carter, go ahead with your question. Let's switch to the defense now. Hey, uh, Coach Day, thanks for taking my call. Um, looking back on the uh, the season, what is the difficulty about the season? I know with the coronavirus and all that, was that the difficult part of the season to keep everybody together? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I mean, there was a lot that went into that. Um, this is, you know, it's probably an hour uh, answer to, to that whole thing. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a lot with these guys. Um, you know, having no fans, having no season, having games canceled. Yeah, it was it was a challenge, but um, wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, what what these guys have learned, and what what our coaching staff has learned, and this whole program has learned about, you know, what our culture is all about. Very very proud of that. And uh, for the guys who are in the locker room who uh, are gonna, are going to be coming back, they have something to uh, motivate them in the off season. You know, that that feeling of coming off the field. We felt that way coming off the field last year in Clemson. Now we feel some way coming off the field against Alabama. So I'm uh, going to use that as a motivation. You know, in the off season. We have time for a few more questions. Let's try Carter Hill once again. Coach, how would you? reflect on Ohio State football in your opinion in 2020? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought that the the culture of our program, um, the leadership of our program, the way that our kids fought for a season and then came back, dealt with all the adversity along the way of games being canceled, guys being out. Um, you know, for some programs, there was a lot of guys out early and they kind of got them back and were able to get into a rhythm. It was very, very difficult for us to do that. We had, you know, the offensive line was out for an extended period of time. And then, um, you know, in this game, we had a defensive line. We had wide receivers, um, you know, during the Big Ten championship game. And so for us to continually work through all of that and get to this moment right here was an unbelievable success. And uh, we won the game. The goal was not to get here. The goal was to win the game. But all that being said, uh, couldn't be prouder of our culture, what our kids are made of, and where the program's headed. And our last question for Coach Day will come from Tino Benzi. All right, one last question. We'll try uh, Tim May. Tim, go ahead. Yeah, Ryan, as you look back on it, there were a few times when y'all made it almost look easy going down the field and then others uh, 
where was herky jerky and i'm just wondering as as you reflect back what was it that alabama was doing defensively rolling the dice etc they gave you the most problems and could you give us an update on wyatt davis uh yeah wyatt uh just talked to him um you know he he kind of re-injured that knee um yeah sore right now i'm not sure um you know what the what the diagnosis is we'll have to check with our doctors but uh but he's he's sore you know he's certainly in pain um yeah you know on offense the thing for us was i felt like when we got the first first down we kind of got going and we get into our rhythm and our tempo um when we couldn't get those first first downs that's when i think we had three three and outs in the first half that hurt us and then uh, i think we had a couple in the second half as well and and one of the challenges is that you know we like to go tempo um, but when you go tempo when you go fast you know you put the defense back on the field and uh, when you go against an offense like this um, that's kind of in the back of your mind and so it was kind of hard for us to get into a rhythm it was hard for, for us to get into that kind of tempo. We did a little bit. We got a couple of points, and we, we did a nice job there. Um, but, you know, there was also the other side of the ball, and, and we had to kind of balance that out. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, if we just did a little bit better job executing to get those first couple first downs and get into a little bit of rhythm of the drive, uh, we would have done better. All right, that's it for this uh, virtual press conference with Coach Day. Thank you very much for joining us. 